present here. I take this privilege to welcome you all for the fifth Professor S. S. Datta Memorial Lecture organized by the Indian Leather Technologists Association, ILTA, during the 37th India International Leather Fair. Let me start with the words of Steve Jobs. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. I request the dignitaries to kindly take the dais, please. with a shared goal of uniting individuals involved in various facets of the leather industry. ILTA represents India in the International Union of Leather Technologists and Chemist Societies IULTCS, which is more than a century year old organization. ILTA operates and has members not only in all parts of the country but also throughout the world. ILTA has been organizing Lexpo's leather expositions to promote and provide marketing facilities to keep pace with the latest design and technology and to have better interaction with the manufacturers and buyers of leather goods. Today, Lexpo has become a popular people's fair. With this note, I request Mr. Sushanta Malik, General Secretary ILTA, to address the gathering. It is a nice start. We are feeling better with this nice song. Very good morning to everybody present here. Today, we are here to pay homage to Professor S.S. Datto for his enormous contribution for leather science and technology. We have lost our beloved teacher and author of the most popular books in leather science and technology on 14th January 2018. I personally feel fortunate to be a student of this eminent teacher. His contribution for Indian Leather Technology Association was enormous, specifically for our journal, which we are publishing for the last 70 years, every month. And that is the only technical journal, exclusively technical journal published by ILT in India. Also, he has immense contribution for other books as well, which we publish every year. ILT publishes his books since long time and we sell it at cost price throughout the world and I as I know all in all the institutes of leather science and technology you will get this book looking to his immense contribution towards leather fraternity ILT decided to organize a memorial lecture every year on this occasion and also we give award to the scholars with best innovative projects of different universities of India. We are also giving awards to the best exporters from leather industry in 2022-23 on this occasion. Apart from we are felicitating eminent personalities of leather fraternity. Today we have Mr. Abdul Wahab, the eminent industrialist. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation. We have guest of honor, Dr. Chandra Shekharan, the former director, CLRI. 
we have several eminent dignitaries on the dais of the dais including dr ajamani students scientists and others we welcome you all to this program now as a customary i would uh, request to honor our honorable guest of honor dr chandrasekharan i will i would call dr ajamani to honor dr chandrasekharan please Southern Region Committee of Indian Electronics Association to honor our honorable speaker, Mr. Wahab. I request Mr. Wahab, please. Dr. Raghav Rao, Mr. Mohan, Dr. Ayamani, Mr. Luthra, the editor of Leather Edge. We are fortunate to have him here today. and i request the award winners of today who are present here can you please come and pay your tribute to the teacher so i mention the name nikhilesh shri gs mr yasef rudrashekaran mr devjit mr gokul tribute now now we could start the actual event main event i request which is soyer to take over we we'll start the event please thank you so much sir uh, with this i request uh, dr j ragava rao emeritus scientist csir clri to deliver the welcome address very good morning to one and all i think uh, it's a very warm welcome to all of you on this special occasion i think this mic is not uh... hello yes. yeah it's really a warm welcome to all of you on this occasion of uh, fifth professor ss datta memorial lecture for this we have a person i mean uh, from the industry a legendary person coming and participating and giving us a lecture on leather equating to a legendary from the science side professor datta i think all the students who did leather technology will never forget professor datta because it is something like a bible for everybody who have gone through leather technology course still i have that book i have not given it although i uh got relieved myself from official service from clri i am still preserving that book an introduction to the principles of leather manufacturing i think that everybody used to have it used to be little thin now it has become little thick 
that's what is the difference which i could see maybe they have i mean the latest uh, revisions they have introduced more theory one thing something great about this we do have one more kt sarkar also there is one theory and practice of leather manufacturing here more of practical knowledge whereas uh, yes professor datta book has talks about more of theoretical knowledge mechanistic things how it is done what things are so it's for a general student it used to be very nice to really understand the subject so it is befitting to really see that i mean uh, two i mean eminent personalities like one personality in science i mean to really pay homage we have another personality from kh group to really looking at putting forward i mean his thoughts about how we can take it forward the industry because he is also i mean his group is supposed to be the one of the best in this country so the really i mean the cell uh, as i mean the, the picking up of the speaker is so apt for this fifth memorial lecture so i think uh, we have lots of people looking forward to see that i mean uh, how what i mean he is going to share and provide us the information to take this industry to a greater heights because we could see the industry is really going to going through turbulence because of several uh, factors around the globe so in such a situation how i mean india being so economically stronger today can make this industry also stronger see for economics to be stronger we need the base so this industry which used to be a real i mean for employment generation and export two factors which are important for thrust economic thrust so we really look forward to hear from him and we have here lots of students also look forward to interact with him so that i mean you get lot of things from the industry personalities one teaching is one thing but learning from an industry person is something different so here i mean we look forward for a wonderful session next i mean now 45 minutes and then see that we go with the I mean uh, <coughs> memory that it was really nice to participate in this uh, professor ss datta memorial lecture i am really fortunate to be here to welcome you all because uh, i think uh, president southern region sir mr n r jagannathan is out of station so he has asked me to take his role in uh, doing so i am really privileged to do this and i welcome you all once again let us move forward to see and how things will go next 45 minutes thank you very much thank you sir May I now request the guest of honor, Dr. B. Chandra Shekharan, distinguished scientist, CSA or CLRI, to address the gathering. Uh, distinguished speaker for the day, Shri Vahab, my colleague, Dr. Raghav Rao, Shri Shushanta Malik, Dr. Mohan, and other eminent guests from industry and our own institution, and my students. This is an opportunity given to me to be part of this memorable event. I, I really thank the organizers, both ILTA and even the Southern Region, for having invited me to be part of you. Many a times, the, the, such occasions give an opportunity to talk to mix of people it could be sharing views of your own colleagues sometimes and also many often such invited lectures when when they are being given they come with uh, with an uh, with an effort uh, to share their thoughts in my opinion as my colleague dr rahul rao said kh is one of the names in Indian leather and leather product sector. I still remember our college days where we took a, a day of uh, industry visit to uh, Ranipet, Ambur and Vellur areas. It was a one day visit. We had packed visit but I still don't forget visiting KH Tandri. Even in, that, in the 80s, in my opinion, it was one of the modern industry I and their buff coughs 
and, and why i'm talking about that kh has really grown much bigger since 1980s but what i'm trying to say is they have still not probably left their legacy in in making a, the world top grade buff cough even today and in fact it is this organization which gives us i mean what sustainability is all about very many things have changed whether it is leather processing or finishing and so many other aspects but yet they remain relevant even today not only that adopting to changes so let me tell you uh, i think that wahab's swahab's father uh, hashim saab himself is a part of i must say uh, change agent i should say he was the one who was leading and today if the industry here are all i mean complying the environmental this and and really every year billions of liters of water which otherwise would be consumed by this sector is being saved if i say that about 80% of the water is being recycled by all the co- common effluent treatment plants imagine to that extent we are saving the water which otherwise would be going into the drains whether after treating also so that was the kind of a visionary and many a times one feels we are fortunate to have people like hashim babu and dr ram sami and so many other people and sometimes people say under the banyan nothing grows but then we had several such banyan trees but which were literally allowing us to grow much bigger and the myth of i mean nothing grows under the banyan is being i mean this because an, a clear example here is mr abdul wahab himself i myself have seen him how he has risen from from a modest time in this when he entered and now what he is and there are many people in fact we are fortunate to have him address in many of our leather research industry get together gatherings as well and i myself have seen the kind of forward thinking what he has and i'm i'm really keen to look forward in fact the very short interaction what we had i'm meeting him after few years but yet i mean his passion to look for and i think we need to look towards sustainability the carbon footprint and so many other things i mean we need to do and we've been sharing and and of course if god willing we all would be still working on that aspect in totality because the leather research institute today is more relevant i was talking about him probably this is the only institute right now which can address from cradle to gray from right from raw materials and and there i mean process and to the products and the whole aspect of it and there what are the places where i mean we could look for for carbon footprint and several other aspects of it it may take a monumental in fact we don't have experimental data to validate and and see where do we really stand let alone the, the other aspects of transporting these finished materials from one place to another and their effect on environment that is another aspect of it but all i am saying is from from uh, heights and skins to making a finished product and there are several such challenges i am i am really glad that i have shared few of the ideas with him and i am also like many of you i am very keen to listen to his address and many of the younger colleagues here and i think this should be an inspirational one for you to emulate and with these few words i once again thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity wonderful opportunity to be part of this event thank you all so we'll have the award uh, medals now so uh, The SS Datta Memorial Medal is the award presented to recognize the most innovative projects undertaken by students of B.Tech Leather Technology, M.Tech Leather Technology and M.Tech Footwear Engineering and Management. I request the award winners to come forward and receive their medals. The SS Datta Memorial Medal is presented to Mr. Gokul Ganesh V, Mr. Mohammad Yasser M and Mr. Rudra Shekharan S of B.Tech Leather Technology Anna University for the most innovative project on enhancing nap effect on new book leather with the help of foaming machine i request mr abdul wahab to present the award please yeah. 
ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಗೋಕುಲ್ ಗಣೇಶ್ ರುದ್ರಶೇಖ್ I request uh, this award to be presented by Dr. J. Raghav Rao. The SSZ Memorial Medal is presented to Mr. Niklesh C. of M.Tech Footwear Engineering Management, Anna University. May I now request Mr. Sushanta Malik to present the medal to Mr. Debajit Sen, B.Tech Leather Technology from Maulana Abul Kalam Azad University of Technology for his most innovative project, Isolation and Identification of Pigment Causing Chrome Resistant Fungi from Red Blue. The SS Data Memorial Medal is presented to Mr. Premjit Biswas, M.Tech Leather Technology from Maulana Abul Kalam Azad University of Technology for his most innovative project on an essential study on ILTA serves as ILTA's mo- monthly publication making significant contribution to the field of leather technology widely recognized by its technical depth and relevance. JILTA has earned a po- reputation as the most extensively circulated journal in this domain. As a crucial resource for professionals, researchers and enthusiasts in the leather industry, JILTA plays a pivotal role in fostering knowledge is exchange and promoting innovation. May I now request Dr. V. Chandrasekharan to release the IILF 2024 special issue of JILTA, February 2024 and hand over the first copy to Mr. Abdul Wahab. It's time for the announcement of Best Exporters Award 2022 to 2023. Uh, the award will be sent directly to the premises. So the announcement of the awards is Mrs. Fente, Tamil Nadu, Mrs. Apache Footwear India Private Limited, Andhra Pradesh, and Mrs. Tata International Group, Tamil Nadu. Thank you. The award will be sent directly to their premises as they are in present here with us today. The Professor S.S. Datta Memorial Lecture is conducted every year in the honor of late Professor S.S. Datta to commemorate the contributions and legacy of him. Today is the 5th S.S. Datta Memorial Lecture happening during the 37th India International Leather Fair at Chennai. One of the famous business tycoon Dhirubhai Ambani once said that for those who dare to dream, there is a whole lot of world to win. Present with us today is Mr. Abdul Wahab, a proficient and accomplished businessman currently serving as the manager direct, managing director of KH Exports Private Limited. With over two decades of expertise in the lens of leather and leather product industries, Mr. Abdul Wahab possesses a wealth of expertise in strategic planning, business development and international affairs. His leadership has significantly contributed to strengthening the operational capabilities of the company, ensuring a sustained and fruitful relationship with international clients. As a director of KH Foundation, he actively participates in various social activities and holds influential position within the leather industry. Uh, may I now request Mr. Abdul Wahab to deliver the Professor S.S. Datta Memorial Lecture on the subject Global Leather Sector Revolutionizing Sustainability, Circularity and the Way Forward. Sir, please. Respected former director Dr. Chandra Shekhar, CLRI, General Secretary of ILTA, Indian Leather Technologies Association, Mr. Susanth Malik, Dr. Raghav Rao, and <laughs> okay. Dr. Mohan, <laughs> professors scientists from the Central Leather Research Institute and from ILTA and friends from the industry. I am, it's a great pleasure and honor for me to be here to deliver Professor Dr. 
एस एस दत्ता फिफ्थ मेमोरियल लेक्चर द टॉपिक फॉर टुडे इज ग्लोबल लेदर सेक्टर रेवल्यूशनाइजिंग सस्टेनेबिलिटी सर्कुलरिटी एंड वे फॉरवर्ड दिस इज द मोस्ट बर्निंग सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द लेदर इंडस्ट्री एंड लेदर प्रोडक्ट इंडस्ट्री एक्चुअली आई हैव डिवाइडेड दिस लेक्चर इन टू थ्री पार्ट्स फर्स्ट इज टू टॉक अबाउट ए लिटिल बिट ऑफ हिस्ट्री एंड अबाउट अबाउट द लेदर इंडस्ट्री ओवर द एजेस एंड the next sector leather leather industry and the leather product industry and the final the brands customers where it is being sold so what are the challenges in each section what is the sustainability challenges in each section and how the leather industry going forward both product everything could be a circular and the way forward this is what my lecture is all about so uh which is the first industry on earth this is the most important aspect to see that in today's world everybody are challenging the leather industry as such so which is the first industry on earth so it is the the leather industry is the first industry on earth this is the most important thing as we know is prehistoric man when he was here he didn't had the options of any clothing it's the skins of the hunted animals so our industry is dates back to the actual existence of man so this is the first industry and definitely it cannot be the uh, last industry and it will continue whatever no matter whatever the challenges this uh, facing this industry so tanning in medieval times this is one of the moroccan side so vegetable tanning that was done during the medieval times so the it was mostly vegetable baths pits pit tanning some of them we could see in the in the here now also and the bags that were made during the medieval times something there and the next during the 1920s tanning in early century this is the how it has been some of the thing we can see are in the in the during early days of this uh, industry in during the 70s 60s and 70s but it's mostly european picture there where, how it has been during the early part during the world wars and now in 80s and 90s and 2000 this is the modern tanning industry nowadays if you look at the 80s and 90s and 2000s is the biggest 70s and 80 biggest revolutionizing the entire leather industry as such so here you know the population grew the uh, popularity of the leather grew and whatever the product that were made it's a, it was a a big uh, opportunity and with that the industry grew any industry such 70s and 80s and 90s it was a big you know any industry has a lot of challenges so this leather industry also face lot of challenges because as the industry was growing it's a water intensive industry so there were a lot of uh, uh, environmental impact to the uh, this industry has created there is no denying a material to how it was too early that time in 70s and 80s and 90s so this was a challenges that during that time it paid challenges in tanneries one of the environmental impact so water was let into the uh, as such land and this was also creating a problem socially and this was addressed especially i would like to say recently we had a family gathering just last week and we were discussing with the four generations 
so how our grandfather started and then my father who took over and then ourselves third generation and then the fourth generation in during these discussions because sometimes something i don't my myself don't know about this kh was the first in india 1976 to put the effluent treatment plant when no pollution uh, board existed in joint collaboration with the central leather research institute 1976 definitely for 1970 my grandfather would have been there he he passed away in 1976 so that was the vision that time and when nobody was asking uh, about this no brand was also insisting we asked father who joined we came we this we came we, we learned in the beginning of the day and father joined in the evening so he we asked him what made him to do this thinking when the brand was not asking the government was not looking and there was not a pollution board he said we have to take care of the society and that was the thing and we took care of the society like that so that was his image i mean uh, his uh, uh, his uh, uh, thing to con uh, for us to think forward so uh, then next came the second one what was that second one was the ch water water that was the another challenge environment second was the water the third is the hazardous chemicals this industry consumes and thanks to this uh, knowledge that is being coming out that the zero discharge of hazardous chemicals some brands are pushing on to that and there is a knowledge that is coming out from this so what in chemicals are hazardous and how this need not should should be removed from the thing from the usage so the uh, the water challenge that was also being taken care and the hazardous chemicals and handling and also in the usage and the fourth one is the heavy electrical consumption this industry uh, uses so these are the challenges and how the tanning industry has some more challenges will be there but i'm just highlighting the more four thing there next uh, thing there sustainability of the tanning industry so this is the the first is the effluent treatment plant and tanneries in common effluent treatment brand ranitech is a great example uh, of how a cluster development how tanneries can join together and offer a solution so ranitech is uh, a must and lot of uh, countries from abroad they come and see them how it is thing again a partnership from central leather research institute and plus the uh, uh, semcot is there another thing and the second thing is again from the zero liquid discharge that is the part of this reverse osmosis plant where the water what uh, mr malik was also saying and our doctor uh, professor chandra shekar also saying we are not using the water we are not using the ground water we are not using the water from the river we are whatever the water is there we keep circulating and circulating that is the biggest uh, advantage and again india this zero liquid discharge and then the subsequent multi effect evap evaporator zero liquid discharge concept is only there in india as such even in developed countries they are still just treating the common effluent treatment plant this i would like to say how the industry and the government and the people together see that it is a uh, that india should not be following somebody else india should be a leadership position and think way forward in all this not only environment and also i will be talking about the sustainability aspect there so the common effluent treatment plant and from there the some salts some final leftovers is there and then multi effect evaporator all these are very expensive very expensive and um, industry is there and our our own thing is there and how we are uh, tk t and not uh, considering the profit as the most important but to be part as what father has said about the taking care of the society all along 
so that is the uh, motive behind this investment and i would also like to put a uh, uh, solidarity that has been helping and working on various still some parts of challenges so mr suril is also there thanks for asking and uh, sharing this slide so what are the ways that is coming to this uh, one is the flushing waste from there these uh, boards are made and the from there the products can be made and these sustainable steps to paper blocks that is from the tannery sludge and the salt flushing flushing to biogas and biomanure this is a great uh, new aspect and thinking all are in advanced stages advanced stages of getting the approval from various government agencies so and then the final salt the zld that what the, from coming from the multi effect evaporator that if it's converted to like say common salt again the industry can use because the industry raw is uh, skins are yeah, again salting this raw skins and then so this can again go circular back into the uh, in the into the thing there so that is all the works are going on in advanced stages not just the thing and solidarity that of course is a funded from the european union that i must uh, think there that is helping not only the industry here in kanpur and Kal kolkata as such and so that is a, a good part of this thing so industry as such you know we have talked about the challenges of the leather tanning industry so what are these challenges further challenges is what i am now thinking what the brand is coming from behind so where are your skins coming actually from so this is a very important uh, aspect because you know certain countries are having a uh, to uh, its uh, i mean are having farming extensive farming which is part of the of course the meat industry but in this process of extensive farming are going and cutting down the forest so that is a deforestation aspect is taking place so the industry the brands and the customers at the final end are uh, actually worried about this and they want to have a proper traceability system so that's how this whole thing comes uh, as such leather industry is a uh, leather is a by product of meat industry you, you know that and actually the consuming this by product is reducing the waste what skins if that leather industry doesn't exist it can go to landfill some of the challenges we are seeing still the because of this low upward take because now there is a big uh, uh, recession here and we have come to hear some information that a lot of skins are going to the landfills like that that is raw skin because there is not take and also this thing so this is so really the industry as such even though this deforestation is not a problem of the leather industry it's more from the farming and animal industry but we take that as a what solution we can provide from our side and that is to from tracing to slaughterhouses and going back to the uh, back to the farms and see that that this aspect of farming doesn't uh, go into deforestation that is very very you see de uh, the forests are the actual uh, helping us to reduce this greenhouse gas emission so we have to take care of the forest and i'm very fortunate to say in india and uh, miss mariel is also here we are not having any deforestation happening in fact the government protects the forest and protects the animals the wildlife and uh, here the as such it's uh, a not extensive uh, meat industry that's there that is uh, heavily or uh, growing the thing more it's coming from the fallen animals or from slaughter houses so that is really taking care of the uh, traceability aspect and a lot of work is going on in the traceability aspect in india and uh, definitely as an industry we are also looking from the lwg leather working group that is helping us to trace the slaughter houses the trace the supply chain the tracing the supply chain of where the wet blue how, which tannery how it is coming from how the uh, parameters are being taken care so that is the how the industry as such is protecting so the next subject 
of my discussion is the sustainability and circularity in the leather product industries. So the leathers that we are coming from the tannery is going into leather product industry. Majority is footwear and handbags and wallets and belts. And of course, upholstery is also coming up. So some uh, is a huge opportunity, I mean huge, uh, I would say a labor intensive helping the uh, economically uh, backward, uh, especially women in India in the world that is helping giving the job op opportunities and creating, creating an emp empowerment that is very, very important. And what are the challenges this industry, this aspect of the, this uh, section of the leather industry is facing. So here we are having the scraps that is coming up and then you have certain brands that creates liability because the fashion leathers that can if something is folk projected then doesn't come so the liabilities from the brand that get created some rejected leathers leftovers and rejected products so challenges these are the products that we are facing here and what how the industry as such is working towards these overcoming these challenges so here the scrap leathers, you know, can be moved into, can be made into boats. Solidarity Dad is also working on that. And KH as such, last four years have been looking at, at these challenges. And we have worked out an innovative patented product. That is, the scrap leathers can be given a binding by, with the binding, uh, bonding, bonding. And these beautiful products that really represent the um, uh, colorful scrap that we are getting generated uh, and that's the in the a uh, lot of recycled leathers are there up in the market that is also a good aspect a lot of fibers i mean uh, uh, scrap is converted into fibers and then regenerated with the leather but it's a bordering more like a polyurethane but here we have created a beautiful thing that is uh, one uh, part of the solution to this fashion leather product industry that we have uh, thing that that is inevitable and here sustainability the next sub subject at the customer level at the customer level what we have unsold merchandise this is a challenge you know a brand do buy uh, in order to see how the demands and certain colors get stuck it doesn't get resonate with the customer so the the products go there or they over buy and these products have some timeline and they need to move out so they because a lot of uh, that's how the fashion and uh, customer uh, thing there it sits on a certain timeline and after that discounted after that anything it needs to move out so new fresh products can come in and take over so we have unsold merchandise there unused merchandise you know a lot of big uh, consumption brands the, I mean customers in developed countries some have uh, three pairs per year four pairs seven pairs and then we have great uh, ladies that buy a lot of bags fashion bags <laughs> every year so that's how it keeps the industry and our growth and uh, thing there but these thing comes what happens after two or three years that's stay in the wardrobe and that needs to be uh, so, uh, comes come need, needs to be found a solution. So and then the return goods also there from the uh, wholesalers to the brands and that sits in the warehouse in developed countries for a long time. So what can be the sustainability here, uh, there? So just on that topic there, what we are looking at is we are partnering with the brands. We have taken one uh, aspect to study how at the development of the product itself, how the bags can be disengaged after their use. Some brands working to asking the customers to bring back those bags, they can repair it and give it. So they have a small setup atelier in their stores where they can repair some loose stitches, some handles to be fixed and they give it back so that it is continuous. And some brands, they are uh, working to see that the disengagement happens so easily that they can be recirculated back. So that's how here animal farms, slaughterhouses, the tannery, leather products, stores and brands customer and consumer and then the break breakdown our own way we can break down the bags come back 
lot of legislation is there that needs to be worked around with the government. The bags comes back. We can break down again, uh, dis uh, engage those bags, use it in our beautiful, innovative product uh, I mean, uh, 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 sheets, and then we again circulate back into the economy. So that keeps this loop can be a circular one, and that keeps uh, uh, continuing so that we don't uh, we don't uh, damage the environment uh, thing that's that's the um, in, on the circularity part i would like to say on that thing finally this is another subject that we cannot wish away it's my favorite as well and this carbon footprint just to give what is carbon footprint global warming is a big challenge due to greenhouse gaseous emissions carbon footprint is the weighted sum of ghg emissions expressed in carbon dioxide equivalents. Leather and textile industry car, uh, contribute. Of course, this 5 to 7 percent is from the internet. I don't have any, uh, any uh, uh, numbers to that. And carbon, to em uh, carbon dioxide emissions in the leather sector comes from various aspects. I have put something here, transport of these raw skins and wet blues from the developed countries water consumption, energy footprint, and recycle of waste. A lot of data is there in the internet on this carbon footprint. I would say that this is not a, um, this, uh, not a, a correct data to be, it needs to be validated, validated because some are having a biased approach towards this industry. They can build in our carbon dioxide equivalent, greenhouse gas equivalent right from the farming. Right from the farming, I mean our industry starts as such from the slaughterhouses, from the skins that comes out of the animal, from there to transportation, red blue conversion, transportation to our uh, here in India and then that should be the actual aspects. So there are some uh, data that are there in the net where it says that for some reason, uh, this uh, leather has been calculated from farming onwards. That is a biased approach, I would say. Nobody is going to farm for five years, deforest, and finally say that for the 10% value of the skin of the animal, that we will work for this 10% or 5% of the value. That's how uh, things. So they, that is, you are pushing the industry to a penalty zone. So that is not the right uh, approach. So approach should be from the slaughterhouses. That is our responsibility. What all these things are there, waste and challenges that our industry need to address and we are addressing and we will overcome these challenges. Against this, there is a polyurethane uh, PVC footprint too not much far away, little lesser, not too much uh, very down, but you must see that one aspect is leather is timeless, timeless, five years, ten years, it doesn't go away, whereas uh, the PU and PU, PVC has a time bound, so one or two years only it can last, after that you see it's peeling off and everything goes out or uh, maximum, so two or three times of this PU and PVC against the leather which is timeless is a much more powerful uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, thing product that we can own. So these are all the uh, things that we need to put to the consumer. The brand is also here and from our side like I said uh, earlier India has been the forefront in the environmental challenges and addressing much ahead and still far ahead. Even in carbon footprint, I have been requesting the Central Leather Research Institute and if possible from the scientists that are working in the ILTA. This is a must and we need to work, provide the data and our data should go and sit at the top over the world's already, already some data has come somewhere. So the scientifically researched data will be much appreciated and this data can hold good for all aspects. With that, I end my discussion. Thank you very much, uh, thing there. Yeah. Yeah, I was also told that this is the most important uh, to address the queries from the uh, 
stu students that are there. If there is any such thing, I would love to take it. If not, we can just... Uh... Thank you so much, sir. More of a lecture to us, an eye-opening session for everyone in this leather industry. The way he highlighted about traceability, uh, circularity, carbon footprint, which are all the heat of the topic today. So uh, we can encourage few questions from the younger generations of leather technologies. Any questions from BTEC and MTech students? Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I have a question to Mr. Yavar. Just an addition, not a question. That you are saying that uh, uh, synthetic uh, bags uh, may be used twice or thrice during the lifetime of a leather bag, right? So pollution is more than leather. There is another aspect that uh, once you discard the synthetic bags, it takes a long time to buy biodegrade. But leather degrade much faster. So to, in totality, the pollution of synthetic products is much, much more than leather. That is the one of the yeah, point. That is, that is very important. Just uh, on that subject, one of the leading tech players has uh, just uh, said that they won't use the leather uh, thing there. But if you look at that, their product, I mean, anything that made from Check. Check. we are using those products. Within one year or two years, we need to discard and change. So there is a product. It's just not the, they are playing to one gallery, but in reality their products, that is the cover from the PU and PVC, will need to be discarded and again bought. So that is the additional profitability to them. So we should be aware and, uh, and of course industry as such should, should be louder. Louder, that's what we're also telling on the government side also. We, the government also needs to clear a lot of myths, a lot of myths about the leather. And of course, there have been a lot of challenges. They have images about the industry in the past, but it's no longer there, no longer there. And we, as such, need to project the better side of the leather industry. Thank you. Another request to you. You are one of the uh, leader of leather industry. And you had immense contribution, you, your father, your forefather. <laughs> So the request is that there is a propaganda worldwide that uh, animal is killed for leather. That is a wrong propaganda and uh, they are uh, highlighting the other products which are synthetic. Uh, they are saying that it is non-polluting and all. So can we not, uh, with the help of the government and the associations and the industry and like pe people like you, that we start a propaganda that leather is not uh, produced uh, for a uh, the animal which is killed for leather, it is a byproduct, and we are actually saving the environment by treating the leather. So, can you not do something like this that we expect? Yeah, this is also a very good uh, question, sir. And uh, we have been discussing at various forums, especially the uh, with the CLE Council for Leather Exports, along with the our government Council for Leather Exports. We can partner with similar industrial councils, especially in Italy. Italian government and Italian council, one thing is there, that is talking and asking to differentiate because there is a lot of fox leather is being, uh, I mean, uh, being said as a, as a leather, uh, so and all that. So that sh they should not be talked about uh, as a leather, but should be as a PU or PVC. And uh, the brighter aspects, as I said, uh, from this European Union, European, European Union, why I say is, still has a huge industry base. If you look at, and this industry base is also giving a lot of job opportunities job opportunity like LBMH group they have several brands similarly Italian they have several brands any uh, damage of image 
of about the leather is going to affect a lot of uh, aspects to their industry and also their livestock uh, outcome and they need to be having some solution what to do with their skins and all that thing so uh, as i said we have to partner on this subject at a uh, bigger level like during the milan fair lini apple and other uh, paris fairs and london fair we need to have the this kind of co close collaboration from the industry from us like minded brand like polo raf loran is like a like minded brand they and also the tapestry which is coach that is a like minded brand they and the leather working group these kind of thing we need to uh, dispel uh, the false propaganda and then what all the myths that are surrounding this industry and project the brighter uh, aspects and uh, of this industry thank you sir uh there's one question from the btech students yes creating you know fox uh, uh synthetic material in inside our leather fair and uh, how are we able to you know uh, <laughs> because it is uh, sponsored by gtx and i'm seeing for the past two times and uh, it's little bit concerning one thing and also i have another question on uh, how can we all as uh, leather technologists and industry people we together uh, make a brand and we sell it abroad so it will be easier for all of us and uh, it will be like uh, what are the rejections or a lot of uh, leathers that we are uh, creating so we can send it to one place and uh, we can uh, make a brand out of it and we can sell it as indian uh, you know brand so it is possible if we are all united and uh, if we all think about it so these are my two questions actually so is it possible from the as such uh, this uh, uh, pu and pvcs they are actually a part of the uh, production leather handbags and leather uh, shoes footwear industry as such this fair even though we are calling it as a leather industry this is uh, we are also having machineries for footwear and uh, thing there this leather pvc i mean the pu and pvc were in existence for a long time of late this industry is being distinguished so as such uh, uh, bags were being made from pvc and the bags were being made from the leather too both were in simultaneously in existence for a long time there was no competition i i don't have a data maybe you know different status of the peop uh, people are there out in the world so 20 or 25% only are owned this leather 75% is a vast uh, uh, industry of pvcs and pus that were being there already in existence so these were predominantly going out of china to the world like that but people at the end knew that this leather this pvc and pu would going to last for some time only not like leather leather is something to be aspired about that is an expensive part and that is the to be cherished and uh, go for 5 to 10 years whereas the leather pvc was just like uh, something that can much uh, lower in price off late last 15 to 20 years some different dimensions is being given uh, so for it can be a different things uh, so we are need to be careful that these two things need to exist together only not to be competing against uh, each other but they have each one has its own thing i would also request uh, yeah i would like to say here both materials have to coexist yes. there's okay. no to opinion on that aspect of it there is a saying if every indian citizen have to wear a leather sandal not a shoe okay we will not be having any material with us for export yeah with the kind of population so uh, there is one aspect of it availability okay overall it is it is it is only what i mean we talk about nearly what uh, 20 billion square feet of leather that is what we say yeah and that is it is not either increasing or decreasing drastically also if at all there is only 0.1% 0.2% because the animal population itself is you know this unless somebody revolutionizes and comes 
and makes in laboratory my uh, collagen sheet or a leather sheet, whatever you call it, okay. in a synthetically. Okay. It could be a possibility one could look at. And again, it is the recent negative propaganda that is coming that animals are being killed or I mean the cruelty given yeah. to that for the sake of I mean, you know, making that. And I think we have to counter such negative propaganda, but not to counter non-leather materials. Okay. There is a difference between that. We we also have to, I mean, not to put our emotions on. I mean, the moment somebody says about, I mean, a synthetic material, we should not, I mean, propagate or we should. It is not. No. They are also as a material. I mean, but in my opinion, instead of countering on those things, let us highlight as he was talking about. Highlight on the sustainability of leather. If I make a leather product. How sustainable it is against any other material, okay. and where does it stand in terms of carbon footprint or in terms of sustainability overall? So, if I can bring such positive things with the proven data, okay, that itself would speak for it. Okay, and at the same time, and uh, the myth about uh, why should we encourage this? Why should we encourage such materials being displayed in the fair? Let me tell you, 40 years before. In Hong Kong Fair, at that time itself, it was more than 60-70% of the APLF, oh. Asia Pacific Leather Fair, had these materials. Okay. We were late. We are late, in my opinion, to adopt. And, and unfortunately, or fortunately, our leather sector also remained somewhat until 10-15 years back not to use any other synthetic material in their product and go only for that. In, maybe that has restricted ourselves, I mean, because not to expand much to okay. look at, I mean, but now at least things are changing and our people are, I mean, uh, looking at all the materials. In fact, most of the brands use leather as part of an embellishment. Okay. So it is so expensive, they can't afford to keep it, my entire, I mean, this as leather. So they can only have some embellishments and with other materials going with it and the value addition. So I think I mean the younger generation should look at how do we counter the negative propaganda made against leather. Sure sir. That's one and again undue propagation for like and people talk about for the non-leather non -leather materials as part of a leather I mean trying to give a word leather and take yeah. I mean a market out of our I mean this yeah. that also should be we should look at cautiously yeah. how do we counter and and for which let me tell you in fact I wanted to tell some of our I mean our trade associations should also look for there is one I mean of course people are now coming with naturally leathers naturally something like that okay. being made now but let me tell you like silk mark so they have their own brand I mean the, the, the silk mark is an establishment and there could be silk like materials in textiles also or several synthetic materials yes but yet they will have I mean a mark something like that I mean we must come out with our own mark uh, which will distinguish our products unique provided we highlight the positive aspects of our letter sure, sir. Being. I'll work on it thank you thank you we can still say leather like materials let them use leather but let them not say mine is also like is, as we're saying about like fox leather or this leather we let them call it as a leather like material we have no see the let us appreciate now and people are trying to use the word leather because because the leather itself has its own value and if all those people who are trying to brand their products as leather this leather yes leather leather that itself <coughs> indicates the success or the positive aspects of leather so let us look at and propagate the positive aspects of leather and that will highlight us thank you thank you sir So thank you, sir. Um, may I now request uh, Mr. Susanta Malik to present a memento to Mr. Abdul Wahab.
we also have mementos to uh, Dr. B. Shekran. And to Dr. Arno. And a memento to Mr. Sushanta. Good morning, one and all. On behalf of ILTA SR and my own, I'm, it is my duty to propose a lot of thanks. Uh, I thank Mr. Abdul Wahab, uh, KH, MD, KH groups. Uh, in spite of this busy schedule, he has accepted our invitations and given a wonderful presentation today. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, your KH group not only uh, enhanced the, our giving the uh, economy to the Indian, Indian economy, but also you are protecting our environment. And also you are giving more, lot of uh, job opportunity to the bottom section of the society, particularly women in the field. Thank you for this. So I am wishing more to be done for the country, sir. Thank you. And also, I uh, thank. I would like to thank Dr. B. Chandrasekharan for his chief guest uh, uh, for your uh, addressing your gathering, sir. Your presence is very. Thank you, sir. And uh, I uh, like to thank Dr. Uh, Mr. Susanta Malik for organiz organizing this uh, SS memorial for every year. Uh, and uh, with your support, sir, uh, thank you very much, sir, for uh, conducting this every year. And, um, and uh, I request, I would like to thank Mr. Dr. K uh, Rago Rao for giving his uh, uh, speech and uh, sponsoring the ILTA SR for this. Wonderful uh, like, uh, uh, event for every all the requests for this. Uh, 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 so. And uh, I uh, wish for all the award winner for these uh, uh, exporters as well as the students who got the top in the school in the college levels. And I will also thank. Uh, for this everyone present in the gathering to make this uh, day a memorable and wonderful and also i like to thank uh, behind this scheme who's begin this scheme who's working in this may the event successful thank you one and all thank you sir uh, we would like to have a quick photo with the award winners uh, so i request the award winners to come on to the day Yes, please. And uh, I request uh, Dr. Jay Kumar, Dr. Bindya Sahu and Dr. Nishad Fatima, without whom they wouldn't have got these awards, to also join for the photo, please. <laughs> Thank you. 